Radioisotopes used in nuclear medicine can be produced using nuclear research reactors, linear particle accelerators, also called LINAX, cyclotrons, and generators. They vary in terms of starting material, infrastructure, security concerns, and ease of preparation. Research reactors produce radioisotopes by fission of a target material, which is typically highly enriched uranium, where greater than 20% is uranium-235. The uranium fission reaction produces a wide range of elements and the product distribution can be represented using a fission yield versus mass number plot. Some of the prominent radioisotopes include molybdenum-99, iodine-131, phosphorus-32, chromium-51, strontium-89, samarium-153, uranium-186, xenon-133, and lutetium-177. One of the most important isotopes in nuclear medicine is technetium-99M. 80% of all diagnostic imaging require this isotope. It is the daughter product of molybdenum-99, which is mainly produced in research reactors from around the world. Majority of molybdenum-99 decays by emitting a beta particle to produce TEC99M, which decays to a TEC99G by emitting gamma rays. The TEC99G further decays to stable ruthenium-99. Many radioisotopes can be produced by accelerators and since the 1940s, they have been produced on large scale. Accelerators have a number of advantages over nuclear reactors. Since they are powered by electricity rather than fission reactions, they are safe, simple, and reliable to operate. They are able to produce a few radioisotopes at a time. They are more economical. Moreover, they generate less than 10% of the waste of research reactors, and the waste is less hazardous. For example, Linear particle accelerators could be used to obtain molybdenum-99, necessary for technetium-99 production, from low enriched uranium target, where less than 20% of uranium-235 is present. The use of LINAC is considered safer since it's possible to avoid the use of highly enriched uranium material that could be used to make nuclear weapons. LINAC accelerates charged subatomic particles in a straight line using oscillating electric potentials. Charged particles are accelerated across the gaps between the electrodes. By the time the particle reaches the next gap, the polarity of the electric field has reversed and hence the particle accelerates once more. These can produce high energy X-rays, neutrons and electrons. The LINAC at XFEL Germany setting at 3.4 kilometers is the longest accelerator in the world. Other important isotopes produced using LINAC are germanium-68, phosphorus-31, and actinium-235. Another type of particle accelerator used for production purposes is the cyclotron. Cyclotrons are circular in shape as opposed to the linear shape of the LINAC. The particle moves in a circular motion under the influence of electromagnetic field perpendicular to its plane of motion. The D-shaped hollow cavities have oscillating charges which allows for the acceleration of particle within. Due to this acceleration, the particle moves in a larger circular radius with each rotation. As the particle is ejected out, it is guided to hit its target where the nuclear reaction occurs. Many positron-rich isotopes commonly used for PET imaging can be prepared using this technique. The targets are selected so as to achieve the intended radioisotopes. For example, bombardment of oxygen-18 labeled water, nitrogen-14 gas, xenon-124 produce fluorine-18, carbon-11, and iodine-124, respectively. Sometimes the radioisotope of interest has a half-life that is too short to be directly produced in the nuclear facility. 
However, the parent radioisotopes produced by reactor or accelerator can be used in chemical separation devices where they decay into daughter radioisotopes of interest. Within such devices called generators, the desired radioisotope is produced directly at the hospital. Let's consider again the example of molybdenum and technetium. Technetium 99M has a short half-life of only 6 hours. Luckily, molybdenum 99, its parent, has a half-life of 66 hours, which allows it to be produced at the research reactor or the accelerator and prepared as a generator in the generator manufacturing facility. The generator is transported to the hospital where technetium 99M is extracted. The generator can be used for two weeks after which fresh molybdenum-99 is required. Another common generator is the gallium-68 generator, which is produced from germanium-68 TK. Gallium-68 has a half-life of 67.7 minutes and it is among the shortest half-life radioisotopes used in the clinic for imaging. Typically, the doses prepared for patients are administered immediately to avoid decay. The half-life of the parent germanium-68, on the other hand, is 271 days, which allows it to be used as a generator for at least a couple of years. When the half-life is long enough, the radioisotope could be produced in the nuclear facility and shipped to the hospitals. Currently, the majority of medical isotopes are produced in either reactors or cyclotrons. However, most of the current reactors producing radioisotopes are scheduled to be taken offline in the next few years, and the supply of such radioisotopes in the future will be secured by accelerators. Indeed, there are more than 1,200 medical cyclotrons currently used worldwide that assure a safe and reliable production.